me. I, I can't see me, but I can see my slides. Is it okay for you? Uh, Do not see your slides. You don't see my slides? It's my, on my entire screen. Are you capturing my screen? We just see you. Oh, no. Where's you pushing yeah, square can, share screen? That can be happening. Yeah, is there, do I have a share screen? Yeah, at the very bottom, John. Uh, it's green. Uh, okay, let me look. In the bottom, it's green. Ooh, it says share screen. Ooh, then there's another button, desktop. Open system, allow Zoom to share your screen. I'm cool with that. It's okay, Zoom. I said it was okay. Can you all tell me if you see my slides now? Not yet. Not yet. We do no? not see your slides. Okay. Oh, golly. I'm gonna hit share screen again. Pretend like I did before. Then we want desktop. And I click share computer sound. I'm going to hit that. And we hear you fine. I'm sorry. We hear you fine. Okay, then I won't touch that one. I'm going to hit share again, and it says open system preferences. So you should get a a screen that says something like share an application like screen whiteboard document so you want to click on the screen do you see that oh my gosh i'm all over the place now post attendees and zoom i don't need that right i have no idea how i got there Previous page, how I got to you, I'm gonna start. It's taking me into nowhere land, so you'll have to keep up with me. And hey, Bill, you've given him permission? I've given everybody permission. Who do I get permission? Bill, hey, whose Bill. meeting is it? Bill's. Do you, do I do need you have to give John permission for, pulls, for screen share? By the way, I sent you my slides in Keynote and PDF, if you can throw yours up. <clears throat> Lord, Lord. Well, I wasn't expecting this. Okay, I'm gonna hit share screen once again and see what world it takes me to. Anybody out there know what whiteboard is? You don't want that. How about desktop one? Uh, That's the one highlight. That's the one highlighted. Yeah, Go for it. that might be where you're on now. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to do that and I click on it. Has questions, share computer sound. You can hear me, optimize screen share for video clip. I'm going to leave it alone too. I click share. It says open system preferences. Whew. Privacy, got it. Screen recorder. We will not be able to record content screen, so it is quit. So, Bill, you might have to put up John's slides. And Tell me, and then just forward it for him. Did I make it? Are no, they up now? Yet. No, not yet. No, oh, you're still not seeing my slides. That's right, not seeing them. Okay, sorry. And I went through and I enabled Zoom within privacy and security. <sighs> sorry about that. So Bill, you're muted if you're trying to talk to us. I can see your lips move. Sorry. John, are your slides on your desktop? Okay. Say what? Your slides should be on your desktop. Open your uh, slides. 
the slide PDF. Let me try it. Let me get out a keynote. Um, I don't I don't see where you sent me anything, John. You said you sent me the slides and I don't have them. Okay. When did you send them? I don't know. This is a wee bit embarrassing. I have two files, Keynote and PDF. All right, All right now sir. I'm on PDF to see if life becomes simpler. Um, getting back to you guys. I could give the lecture while we're doing this. Well, if you tell me where you sent the slides to, I'll, I'll see if I can find them. All right, I will do that because it's, uh, I'm going to do that. Take one minute. You'll get it. Because I don't see them. Okay, doing it again. Uh, okay. And by the way, everybody can get these at some point, right? Yes. Okay. Um, but you know how to do this job. <laughs> I'm fast. Ma'am, I'm doing it like really fast. I get an A. Yeah, okay. But I'm gonna... All right, well, send them to me and then you start talking. We're gonna lose our audience here. I know. Dr. Dr. Renza gets impatient, you know. Well, let me, let me ask, does uh, anybody there deal with... We deal with this... All right, I'm gonna start talking. We deal with issues. Um, how many of us deal with, uh, oh gosh, these are big things. Go back to the, uh, let me ask you guys one thing. Keynotes or PDF, which one has a red logo? Don't know. All right. PDF. It's a, a PDF. PDF. Thank you very much. Bill, you are now click getting a PDF. All right. I'm waiting. All right. I'm just going to start talking then. My subject is, uh, and the reason I got involved with this rheumatology group is because of pain. That's really my background. I got 30 some years in pain. And, uh, try to give you a quick background without being too, uh, gosh, it's amazing how the slides didn't come up. Um, my kind of quick story is I was in the military, got hurt, uh, went through a lot of pain for about 10 years, went all the way through. Uh, I was in tactical military, had a fractured spine surgery and all the things they do for people like us and went through osteopathic training because I thought it was the most advanced medical training I could find. And um, still, even after all we learned in osteopathy with a good hands-on common sense, um, practicality, intelligence, I was in a lot of pain. One question I asked for 10 years was, is it possible that the surgical scarring could be maintaining my pain or causing my pain. I was told through my 10 years of training that the scar tissue could not cause the uh, pain I had, which resulted in uh, migraines, brain swelling, vomiting and passing out, that kind of stuff. So it was some real pain. I was told, no, the scarring couldn't do it. I left the country after 10 years, ran into some Germans who were putting on a conference in something called neural therapy. And um, within uh, 10 minutes, they had me figured out and said, yes. Well, they asked me, is it possible that, or they asked if I had a scar, a scar at the base of my spine. I said, why would you ask that? And they said, well, that is, uh, your symptoms are symptomatic of a scar at the base of the spine. So they said, yes, the scar could cause the problems. And yes, it could be fixed relatively simply with injections of local anesthetics. So 
They injected local anesthetics into the scar and my life changed. Uh, not totally immediately, but pretty much uh, forever. And then other injuries and trauma I had was orthopedic in nature were all uh, solved by uh, neural therapeutic injections with lidocaine. And that's what I'm talking about tonight, what uh, neural therapy is, and that's the uh, treatment. And here's, here's the trick. Here's where we're all going to get involved with this and uh, see what's really happening with neural therapy. Because neural therapy has been around for about 80 years. And in the 1950s, uh, the most advanced medicine, uh, medical techs we had and uh, uh, training courses in pain referred to the 1950s not 80s, 90s, 1950s, as the golden age of local anesthetics because American doctors found out if they injected local anesthetics into a segment, and that's our next big word here, segment um, of the spine uh, and other areas of pain, they had profound clinical improvement. So, uh, that was called the golden age of local anesthetics, 1950s, United States. And um, so it's in most of the medical books. They make reference to the, this, but in the educational programs, usually things that happened in the past are not referred to. Or if we have maybe more efficient therapies, we do that. And if we have maybe more expensive therapies, we do that. And it seems that the inexpensive therapies are the ones that are most often avoided or forgotten. So that's what neural therapy is. But let's think, pretend we're a chiropractor. Someone has heart disease. He would look at the segment of the spine that would be responsible for the heart, say T4, and do manipulation adjustment thinking that you could have what is called somatovisceral disease. That's what chiropractic is, somatovisceral. It can go from the spine to the organ. Chiropractors and MDs were fighting for about 100 years, 80 years, something like that. So 1992, but the MDs allopathic believed that the organ could go to the spine or soma and you could have viscerosomatic reactions. So MDs think in terms of viscerosomatic, chiropractors think in terms of somatovisceral, osteopathies think, osteopaths think in terms of uh, both. You can have viscerosomatic problems and you could have somatovisceral problems. But in either case, you look at the segment of the organ and I hope we get sides. It, in my sides, I included the segments that are associated with the organs and a lot of other uh, papers. We couldn't have gotten through it all anyway. There are like 191 slides, but the references to everything I'm talking about are in the slides. You can get those. So anyway, we're talking about segmental therapy uh, for pain or function. When I, the reason I went to the Germans in the first place, they were giving a special conference in Canada on the treatment of systemic disease, not pain, systemic disease with local anesthetics. And I was wondering, how do you treat systemic disease with local anesthetics? I wanted to find out if they were shit or shinola. So I went to Canada to, to the conference to see who they were and what they knew. And they were truly talking about the treatment of systemic disease. And that could be a GI problem, a lung problem, um, any of the organ problems by injecting the particular segment at the spine, not within the spinal canal, you don't have to do that but near the facets adjacent or near the spinal nerves and um, to normalize what the Germans called interference field. 
so that the uh, lidocaine injection normalizes or enhances cellular communication. Very simple. The clidocaine has an effect on the cells to enhance cellular communication. Therefore, you normalize what the Germans call an interference field, which we call an autonomic dysregulation. And also therein lies a rub. What causes interference fields? How can they be corrected? If you have an interference field because of compression, which is the vast majority of surgeries within smile, with spinal pain, um, uh, that compression will be decompressed through surgery. But that physical compression could also cause an interference field or a disruption of normal autonomic regulation. The Germans say the neural therapy, by the way, which was invented in around 1930s, 1940, um, or discovered then by accident. Um, now I forgot what I was talking about. By the way, I got my MRI. I do have uh, cholesterol stuff going on, plaques. So I'm losing my mind. Use me while you can. But uh, the regulation, the normalization of function, and the term we use in the last 30 years is cellular communication. Two of the Germans who were working with the neural therapist who taught me um, won the Nobel Prize. I trained with the Germans in 86, 87, 89. There he is. Yo. And, um, and they won the Nobel Prize for medicine and physiology in 1990 um, for, yeah. for cellular, cellular communication. So that's all we're talking about. How do you enhance cellular communication? And Bill would know a thousand ways of doing that with hormones. And um, some of the other gents would know how to enhance that with herbs, like Dr. Block. And others would know how to enhance that communication with uh, acupuncture, like uh, Dr. Chen. So there are different ways of enhancing the uh, cellular communication. And if done within a segment, segmental therapy, that's easy give it what name you want to, but that's just a reality that the body reacts in segments. And again, the uh, segments are listed in one of the slides for this program. So anyway, um, that's the gist of it. So I went to see the Germans, uh, not because of pain. I was already told there was nothing I could do about my pain. It was uh, over, it was just done. And uh, only option would be high dose narcotics for the rest of my life. And uh, already had epidural, subdural, intrathecal, spinal tap, and spinal, spinal anesthesia, and uh, maxed out on that. There wasn't much left. Um, so, anyway, I really wasn't expecting for them to take away my pain. I was just curious as hell as to what, how in the world you would treat systemic disease with a local anesthetic. So the answer is it's a segmental treatment and it's done by enhancing uh, the cells. And they were able to study that the cells increased their voltage. So they had enhanced communication because of uh, increased voltage because every battery is a, uh, and every battery, every cell is a battery. So by increasing the voltage, you enhance the communication. Anybody have any questions about this? Maybe only one comment, John, um, yeah. about your history in the 1950s. Um, yeah. the, an the development of regional anesthetics then were really the product of two things, understanding the neuroanatomy better, but also a choice of anesthetics that extended well beyond lidocaine, lidocaine being relatively short acting. And so uh, when I did my fellowship, which is again, almost 40 years ago, but well after 1950, uh, the teaching was, when you gave uh, um, an area of irritation, so to speak, a nerve root, a chance to rest with a local anesthetic, sure, you could take all the pain away, but you didn't have to completely numb it up for, for, long, you know, for long. The longer you gave just relief to the sensory parts of those nerve roots, 
-hmm. the better the outcome. Now, sometimes it would be combined with a local anesthetic, but not lidocaine. Bupivacaine or Marcaine is much longer acting. And when you combine that with the steroid, like, well, Depomedrol, um, which in the epidural space outside the spinal canal is not irritating to the meninges the way that many steroids are. Uh, you sort of get the most bang for the buck, but you're right. They were segments as you put them. And so that's really the development of epidurals as far as the technique that you're, you're speaking of. Putting it to sleep longer with a longer anesthetic than lidocaine though, seems to have more efficacy for once it wears off, it doesn't necessarily come back with the same pain that you might've had before that injection. Yeah, I think it's a matter of uh, discussion, uh, whether or not the length of the, uh, uh, the anesthesia is that important because we tend to think of the uh, anesthetic effect as the systemic enhancement effect, but uh, it seems to be almost irrelevant. The benefit to the, for the pain or to the patient is usually, or the enhancement of communication by the increased communication, not the anesthetic effect, to, for most of my patients, it's just for other than diagnostic is ir irrelevant. The treatment benefit or the enhanced communication is from three to five days, sometimes a week, but seriously for three to five days. So the length of the anesthesia is not that much of a consideration, consideration but research needs to be done in that area because I've always had that same question so many times. But uh, in most cases, we don't know. So, because one yeah. final clinical comment. When a patient yeah. goes home and they get, because of the longer acting analgesic properties of the anesthetic, their first good night's sleep in a, several weeks, yeah. they wake up with a very different attitude, maybe placebo extending it for thinking, gee, they really got something to the right place, finally. So um, there's another side benefit. It, it just give somebody a little longer break from the constant pain and it's oh. neuropathic pain. So it's relentless when it's there. Yeah. It's a whole nother issue, but it's a big, big issue. All right. So I'm kind of playing, winging it here. Uh, in my lecture, I said, it's all opinion. That was something wise that was told me a long time ago in my first day of medical school. It's all opinion. So um, let's see. If I go by the chart, then I'm going to screw it up. So anyway, so the Germans uh, kind of went in, show you the proper techniques. And also within my slides, I have the uh, name of the book, which was written on neural therapy. And there were no books on neural therapy in English until 1984. And there is one simple, relatively inexpensive book, about $100. And it's called the Atlas Illustrated Atlas, not the text, because that's maybe two or 300 bucks. Uh, but you can get them both if you want to learn that. But if you want to know about injection techniques, and most of you are physicians, you know how to put a needle in the body. You should know how to do it safely. And you should know uh, one very important thing. There, there are different rules. I'm really sorry I couldn't get the slides up. Did you get those, Bill? Oh, no, I didn't. No, I did not. Wow, that's crazy. All right. Anyway, is everybody still okay with this? Yeah, keep going. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe there was a karmic reason I didn't put this up. <laughs> you, there usually is. <laughs> yeah, there probably is because uh, I went through the whole, th the thing I have interest in, and we're gonna ask this group later how they feel about this. And when we have our board meeting tonight, we can talk about it because uh, my special interest, even with this group is in uh, torture and pain. We still deal with torture throughout the world and our profession, even though the American Psychological Association as a paper on torture or an opinion on torture, we as a profession do not. So I'm hoping our organization can help to uh, establish that just to show where we are. We don't torture people. I don't think the AMA has that paper yet. So anyway, 
uh, part of my interest is in torture and mind control, which comes from the Nazis. When you talk about the neural therapy, and you say that came all from Germany, and it was kind of a well-hidden secret for a long time, uh, the Germans also uh, were ex experts in psychedelic psychiatry during that same time. So your lidocaine, I think, was invented in 1943, which was a huge improvement over the uh, uh, propane. Uh, but they were also experts in uh, brainwashing, torture, and that type of thing. And uh, as a bit of our history, just for the fun of it, and the reason I think we should discuss some of these things is that the experts in torture in Germany were brought to the United States and became experts in a, an established uh, torture program, which was called the uh, MK Ultra program in the United States, which I think went for maybe 10, 20 years. They had different names, Operation Artichoke. And it was headed by the CIA and it was a secret torture program and pain, pain program um, that was run for a long, long time and involved, I believe, 43 major uh, educational institutions. So it wasn't just a little bit of the uh, educational process. It was a massive mind control torture program in the United States. Can I just ask uh, the audience now, how many of you have heard of MK Ultra? You told me about it a couple of years ago. That was the only time I'd heard of it. Okay. <laughs> I, I've heard of it. Okay. Um, all you have to do is go to Wikipedia. And all the information I have is listed openly and freely in Wikipedia. The federal government made a federal apology with Bill Clinton in uh, the 1990s for what was done to children with the infliction of pain and mind control. So those, uh, what they learned from that situation has, uh, has profound importance because some of those techniques are still being employed today. And um, basically, uh, like I said, I would like for our profession to have a position statement on torture and also to bring to light some of these situations like that. Uh, and remember, we, our official government position was that we do not torture. We, we, we don't do that. That's something we don't do. And we kept that position in until I think 2001 when the uh, photographs came out of people being tortured at Abu Ghraib. And that was the first time it, the government said, the government went from, we never torture, we never torture. That's something we don't even talk about because it's terrible. Photos came out and the government said, torture is good. And then we have to hey, look at that issue too. Is torture really good? Is the information you get good? And if you're torturing people, you can get them to you know, react in a way that's not civil. So uh, anyway, I'm against torture. So that's my simple thing. So anyway, uh, yeah, have you guys, so it, there's a program in the United States for frontline troops called SEERS, Survival, Evasion, Resistance and Escape. And that was a hidden torture program also for a long time. And it supposedly ended in 1970, now I forgot, uh, 1973 or 1975, but it was, uh, it was still continuing. It was supposed to be ended in 1973, officially, the government stopped putting people through this torture thing. But then uh, my experience was in 1985, or no, 1975, two years after the government said they stopped it. So it still goes on, but anyway, if you want to, I'm talking about neural therapy, which is talking about pain. So if you want to enhance, how do you create pain and how do you relieve pain? You relieve pain by trying to get back to a normal, natural, decompressed, uh, healthy, hormonally balanced function. That's right, kind of what you do. 
but if you want to create pain, and you can think of all these things you use to create pain, and these are all involved in torture. If you could think of the opposite of what you do to create the pain, then you could think of something therapeutic. Anyway, the, in the official uh, government, you, MK Ultra program, torture programs, pain, mind control programs, these are the elements that are used. Isolation. And how much isolation have we seen in this last year? Isolation is considered a primary method of torture. Food deprivation, that makes sense. You just get weak until you die in about a month. Sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is a huge element in torture. If you want to make a person go insane, keep them awake for about three weeks and um, they'll be pretty much insane by that time. I mean, a little trigger goes off and they flip. They're one person and they become an altar. You might've heard about that. When you deal about these uh, situations of trying to mind control children, that's why they used a lot of pain and a lot of sleep deprivation because you could, uh, you, you, then you get what's called a flip. And that's what I call a flip. That's what the uh, government calls a conversion to alter. And when that person alters, um, it's like a big dissociation. If it was Susie before, it becomes Billy after. And Billy doesn't know Susie and they don't relate to each other. They just become a completely brand new character. It's interesting to watch and it can happen uh, relatively quickly with uh, some people within a few days. So if you're really tortured a lot, you can have a heart attack uh, and die. Uh, I guess you, and you can lose your mind. You can absolutely go buggy, scream like uh, you're nuts and just lose it. And the other thing is uh, I hear about that uh, enlightenment you get if you can overcome pain that's what i was looking for a lot in my life if i could just overcome pain i'd live like a saint right so if you can meditate or yoga your pain away uh, maybe that's one way of doing it but um, anyway the sleep deprivation is a really tough one uh, you lose your mind three weeks usually uh, the other is exposure that can be extreme heat or extreme cold and um, you know when your body starts shutting down but going going hypothermic um, it just puts an added bur added burden back added burden on you uh, drugs again the germans were experts and the psychedelics in speed for their blitzkrieg and for their methadone for slowing you down so those elements are still, <laughs> what are we, how many years have we gone? 70 years, 60 years, but now fentanyl and crystal meth are the, are the biggies. So anyway, drugs are a big one and uh, I'm not an expert in that. So I won't say that much about it. But uh, uh, since we brought up drugs in a week or two or three, we're going to have a little conference on cannabinoids with Dr. Block. We have Dr. Crowley and some other experts here on cannabis. And we thought we might give a clinical super rundown of what's happening, the latest and greatest in cannabis, and then have an open discussion with all of us for about another 30 minutes. So 30 minutes on an update and interesting issues and then 30 minutes uh, on an open discussion. And we're open to feedback on all of that. So that's how neural therapy works. And I had one section here. When we talk about torture, we talk about the methods employed and we used to call it torture and then we called it enhanced interrogation techniques. When I was involved 40 years ago, we had enhanced interrogation techniques. And the rules for enhanced interrogation techniques 
were the same as those rules for the Spanish Inquisition. You can't kill the person, but I think that happens a lot. Uh, and you can't make them bleed. So the different techniques that are used um, uh, you know, to inflict pain uh, go by the rules of the Spanish Inquisition. It means if they don't bleed, you can do what you want. And that's where you get into the rack and the tearing of ligaments and uh, tendons and it becomes uh, pretty uh, rough. Anyway, so I have pictures from like 1700 here. When, when was the Spanish Inquisition? I don't remember. Um, anyway, and what we did at Abu Ghraib and they're uh, similar, very, very- and 1492. 92? 1492. Oh, okay. Same year as Columbus. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, those are the rules that are in place and that's what we did and do. And, um, since I've been through similar, I advocate for non-torture. Anyways, let me skip through here a little bit, see if I have anything important to say. Uh, what about the technique, John? Which I'll technique, start. the injection the technique? Neuro, the neuro, yeah, neural therapy. With neural therapy, everybody listening here knows how to use a needle. In neural therapy, it's like prolotherapy, if you're familiar with that. If you take lidocaine and add sugar to it, it's called prolotherapy. If you take lidocaine and add uh, cortisone to it, you have orthopedic therapy. If you do lidocaine alone, you have neural therapy. So the use of the needle, and we have Dr. Block, who's an expert in anesthesia, you you can use different anesthetics, but the entrance of the body and how you use the needle can be very simple or very complex, depending on, on what procedure you're doing. Procedure you're doing. If you reference to that book, Neural Therapy According to Honecker, uh, I think it's written by Hogue Publishing. It's an atlas on injection techniques. That's one of the most valuable books uh, I've ever had. And why, the reason they say the, let's see, neural therapy according to Hanukkah is because they believe there's more than one way of skin, to skin a cat. You can do the stellate from the far front, you could do it from the back. You can do it however you wanna do it. And you decide usually what is the safest, simplest way of doing that. Um, Anyway, there's an excellent book on prolotherapy, by the way, by Dr. Raven. If you, and that's also listed in the slides and references I give. There's a ton of references in here, including the research we did. And I'm not going to bore you with that, but I think we've got about 50 pages of research here. Uh, so any of the injection techniques, usually I use a 27 gauge, inch and a half needle. We can go from a 27 gauge to a two inch needle. That seems to be good for about 90% of the uh, problems. In other words, you can go from an inch and a half to two inches and still make profound effect. If you go above that, I prefer 25. And that's even for the facet, parafacet, you can get a lot of effect with a two inch uh, needle, 27 gauge. And uh, if you wanna go beyond that, you can, I always use a three and a half inch, 25 gauge spinal needle. They cost a lot more, but they're awfully nice. You can almost reach any place in the body with a three and a half inch spinal. So anyway, on the, the trickier, more difficult situations, I'll use a longer needle. And the, uh, the substance is 1% lidocaine. No preservative, no steroid, just 1%. So what, what's the difference between this and um, in, in acupuncture, we, we uh, infiltrated scars. Is that pretty much the same thing? We would sometimes uh, use, use just a dry needle. Sometimes we would use a, um, a, you know, a lidocaine to unblock the scars. That's what they called it in, the, in our, at least in our acupuncture classes. Um, yeah, you can try acu acupuncture with the needles, but it doesn't usually open the scar. It just doesn't work. Um, it might help a little bit, but the result you get with lidocaine will be probably a, 
10 to 100 fold greater within one minute. You usually get your results, yes or no, is it involved in, will it work within one minute? So well, lidocaine works pretty quickly, but it's, it wears off you know, in a short period of time. The anesthetic defect is irrelevant. Whoa, try to get it through, Bill. The anesthetic defect of lidocaine is irrelevant when it comes right. to the anesthetic or enhanced communication. And that takes a while for our cognitive dissonance to accept that. And uh, that's why if you're talking to a lot of pain docs who have used a lot of anesthetics, they, um, um, they have a lot of cognitive dissonance with that. They associate the uh, reduction of pain with the enhancement of communication. So, and that's not necessarily so. All right, what about and, the difference? 1% lidocaine you can use easily uh, five cc's without any real discomfort to the patient. If you're going deep in the neck or close to the skull, you might, uh, five or five to 10 cc's might be okay. But uh, I try never to go over 20 cc's even in the biggest stud we have. So what would the difference between be between uh, neural therapy and like Janet Travell's uh, trigger points? Uh, well, you can, they go together, two different people learning different things at the same time. Yeah. Okay, and then, then we hear dry needling, the physical therapists call it dry needling, same thing? Um, you can have some effect with dry needling, but it won't be as profound as with uh, the neural therapy usually. And you have to remember if you're put, if, if it's really that much scar tissue and you feel inclined to tear the scar tissue up with dry needling or try to stimulate with dry needling, that's okay. You can do that. I, I'm not so sure about the word dry needling, but for trigger points, uh, actually we'd even use bigger needles. Uh, the point being the local anesthetic, numb it up, but then make multiple passes in and out to break up the trigger point, actually physically break it up which is kind of cruel if you don't have much local in there, it hurts a lot. But then again, once the um, local wears off, somebody does know that there's been something there, but there's a physical breakup of it that if we send the patient right from that procedure, actually to physical therapy to get some deep massage, it helps to further break things up. So at least that's the way we were trying to distinguish a trigger point from a, uh, a shot that you didn't want to use a big needle for fear of uh, impaling a nerve root. Don't hurt it. Don't hit a nerve root. Um, yeah, you can do it all. The reason we're with this group, it's integrative therapy. So you can use dry needling, you can do massage, you could do laser stimulation. You could do these, the neural therapy in a segment of the spine, but you could also activate acupuncture points, either with dry needling and acupuncture point, massage, laser, injection of lidocaine. No, so you can combine all of these therapies together, I think. And usually, if you do, you just get benefit. I never see any harm done by doing more therapies. You, you, anyway, mentioned, you, you mentioned using fairly large size needles in you know, thoracic spine and lumbar spine. Uh, yeah. Any, any issues with uh, you know, pneumothorax? Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, not with the lumbar. You can be ham-fisted with a lumbar, but if you're around the lungs in the thoracic spine, see if Dr. Block agrees, you gotta be careful. I mean, I've, se I've seen it with acupuncture needles, you know, you know short ones, yeah. tiny, thin ones. So. I, I'm, I'm careful, wide awake, and I don't mess around when it comes anywhere in the thorax. Just wanna be really careful. Make sure you have a bone between you and the lungs. And if you are going to go beyond the bone, be conscious of 3D, know how to put a needle in. After a while, you can get pretty comfortable with it. The, uh, I have, you know, knock on wood, boom, I've never had a pneumothorax. I went to one painting, pain meeting and a uh, doc said, well, I get at least two pneumothorax uh, a year. And if you try practicing for 20 years. So uh, fortunately I haven't had a pneumothorax, but he had 40. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you want to be careful. But the lumbar spine, even though you have to go deep 
and you might be going in three and a half, four inches deep. If you know your anatomy, you just study the anatomy, know how the facets sit, where they sit, how things move, and just pump it into your head so you see 3D, then you can be really safe. I, I used uh, ultrasound here for a long time. And, uh, you know, it was fun. You could see where you're going. So that's another way. If you want to learn how to inject, get, oh, you got the machine, don't you? You have the butterfly system. Yeah, I, I have it. I, I got it about four or five months ago. This is a pretty incredible uh, ultrasound yeah. machine. It's, it plugs into your phone or iPad. Um, yeah. It was, it was the, the base price is $2,000 and it comes with all sorts of uh, videos on how to learn how I'm still learning how to use it. I'm, you know, yeah. but it's, Wait, it's really what, quite clear. And I've had a couple of ultrasound, uh, you know, people that are experienced with it say, it's, you know, it's very clear quality. Um, well, we've I'm been using it, we've been using it for, for injections, um, you know, ultrasound guided injections now. And, um, so um, it's it's quite it's quite a nice a nice little little gadget. Um, doesn't weigh much. It comes with a, a nice little case. You can you know you can put it in you know put it in your trunk of your car and it works works great. Um, mine mine is a uh, five foot rollable unit that costs seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. No, this was and, I got and, I got and what, and what you have works as well as what we have. I, I got the three thousand dollar one, which was uh, with lifetime updates, and and uh, yeah. um, and it's it's really works. It's called Butterfly, and uh, um, that it's one of I think that's one of the things we, we we once once we get up to speed, or at least me get up to speed a little bit. I think one of the things that we if we're doing injections, I think we should be uh, teaching our 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 students. Um, well, it's, it's nice. Uh, to, it's nice. To be, here's the other beautiful part I think about. Uh, the ultrasound, we were using fluoroscopy forever, right? Which are still radiographic shots. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, hitting the patient with radiation in order to see what's going on. And it's not even real time. With ultrasound, it's real time. You can watch where the fluid goes. It's amazing. Um, but ultrasound was not allowed for about 10 years while, uh, while I was doing it. I never charged for it. Um, but ultrasound was not allowed, uh, whereas uh, uh, using radiation was encouraged. So we had a yeah. different opinion there. Well, so anyway, so more you, want, you want to sneak, thinking of that just, just in the old days. So uh, those of you who don't know, I was an OBGYN resident for a number of years, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And we, we had, I had to write a paper on the dangers of breastfeeding and, and how to discourage mothers from doing it. That was, that was one of my assignments. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we doctors aren't, aren't always the smartest, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, knives in the drawer. So John, walk us through a patient. I come in, my neck's hurting. Um, I got pain down my arm and um, I've been to the pain specialist and they gave me narcotics and they gave me an epidural and that didn't really work out so well. And I went to my family doctor and he loaded me up on oxycodone. And then I went to the acupuncturist and that helped a little bit, but it keeps coming back. And now I'm coming to you. So, so what do you look for? How do you, how do you go about it? To, you know, walk us through a, 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 a patient. Uh, the most important thing to me is usually function, not the numbers, you know, one to 10 on pain. But how are they doing? How is it affecting their life? And function usually means taking their uh, extremity, if that's involved, or their head or their spine through a range of motion. So just check range of motion. Does your right arm go up, but your left one doesn't? Then, uh, you know, that, that's one of the things you look for. If you have sensitive hands, you can feel heat. Since we're in, supposedly an arthritis club here, you know, if you really have good hands, I'm sure the old arthritis guys could put their hand over a knee or a shoulder and find exactly the point that was inflamed. And uh, so that's one thing to do, just feel for the heat. And uh, then you get into the whole rheumatology, autoimmune, neurodegenerative stuff. Then you have to have information like you have, Bill, on functional regen medicine. And if they're missing the hormones, uh, they could be chasing their tail. If they really are hormonally deficient, uh, you know, they could just be going down and nothing's going to change unless uh, the hormones are replaced. Anyway, uh, I ask 
usually ask, has a doctor talked to you about this? 90% of the patients who have uh, been to a neurologist or an orthopedist, um, they haven't been, nobody's communicating with them, not much at all. And, uh, you know, has anybody, has anybody reviewed the MRI with you? Usually most of the patients say, no, the doctor didn't say a thing about it, where it'll say you have foraminal, neuroforaminal uh, stenosis. No one, they've never heard the word. Spinal stenosis, they've never heard of it. So the system kind of gets people in pain, has some routine things they do, and that could be an epidural, that could be ablation, that could be a more popular uh, implantation of uh, spinal nerve stimulation. But I think all of those things are directing themselves to money, not practicality. So I just ask a patient, what have they learned? And usually it's not much. And, um, and then I can show, some, show them some yoga exercise first. Like if they got a shoulder problem, show them the rotated shoulder to take it over. And then we do horizontal spinal pain decompression things, which cost nothing. And if the patient doesn't have any relief in pain by doing spinal decompression for a week or two, then we can try simple techniques. And we can start out with acupuncture or what I call trash, transcutaneous anatomically specific homeopathy, which means we can take uh, certain homeopathic remedies and place them on or transfer them into acupuncture points on the body. So usually I don't even start with needles. I'll start with uh, yoga, nutrition, try to get them awake, at least aware of hormones and refer them to uh, an endocrinologist if they need it, uh, order the test. But then we gradually try things like the yoga, the uh, homeopathy, the acupuncture, and that maybe takes care of uh, I don't know what percentage, but then we can go into the lidocaine simply, and then we can go into it a little more complex if they need it. But night, I'll say if a person does one a week, one uh, procedure a week for five weeks, they've gotten rid of 90% of the problem, probably for years at that point. If we need to do more, we can do more. And otherwise, people people that don't survive me are usually looking at a spinal canal implant mm -hmm. okay what who is someone who is does not do, does not do well with this type of therapy oh you're asking me i'm asking you you're the uh yeah the the degree of uh, harm done degeneration from compression in other words somebody who has had spinal stenosis or some major neuroforaminal stenosis but in 90 percent of the cases with neuroforaminal stenosis uh, the patient has never been showed how to decompress the uh, neuroforamen, which is uh, just a little bit pathetic. But, uh, you know, most people never get past first base as far as treatment goes. They never get past the decompression. You know, live with, live with it. Here's a wheelchair. Take your pain meds. Say bye to the kids. <laughs> but uh, there's not a lot of emphasis on function. And if you're going to have emphasis on function, there has to be decompression. So I tell all my, I'll put everything in uh, three things. Uh, I tell all of my patients this, the three things will get you out of pain. Stretch, that's decompression. You teach the patient how to stretch, how to do the procedures. There's some very simple things you can do to show them. And uh, that helps, helps at least half to 90%. So stretch, patient does free. Massage. If you can afford a professional uh, massage therapist, go for it. They're worth their weight in gold. But if you can't afford it, you can buy a machine now called a Shiatsu Total Body Massager that sells for about $50. You can get from Amazon or anywhere else. And um, it has three little balls that turn around like this with uh, shoulder arm uh, connector. So you can do your entire spine, your head, your skull, neck, thoracic, ribs, uh, belly if you want to, legs, lay down in bed, put the machine behind your leg so it can uh, massage the entire back of your leg. If you're, uh, the, uh, if you're the acupuncture type and you like to get energy into the body via the kidney meridian, you can lie on your side and place this massage machine in between the legs 
from the uh, pelvis to the knees. And it does an enormous uh, massage job there and it, and it costs nothing. So stretching is nothing, the massage is virtually nothing. And then I say inject. And you can decide who you want to do the injections, get as educated as you can get, but the injections make a huge, huge difference. Yeah, John, I, I got one of those machines on your recommendation and for the price, I cannot believe how effective it is. It yeah. is, it's, you know, it's a best buy <laughs> that actually works. Yeah, I think it's the best buy in medicine today. What about our what about our, our namesake uh, osteopathic manipulation? Oh gosh, <laughs> I know we all like, well, it's like <laughs> cigarettes. If you got them, smoking, smoke yeah. them. If you can find an osteopath who still does hands, God bless you and the osteopath. Go for it. There are some doing absolutely magical stuff. I do work with a chiropractor or two here. One's a super old timey uh, chiropractor from AT Still Days. He understands what's going on. And then uh, we have a, a father-son team here. The father has been to Germany where they study energetics similar to neural therapy. Remember in Germany, they just don't do the injections. They have homeopathics, electromagnetic fields. These guys are way, way out in that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, we have a chiropractor in town, fortunately, who can uh, detect energy that kind of myofascial stuff, a lot of osteopaths have. Um, and it's absolutely extraordinary because you'll see the patients I, uh, I'm treating with the needles and he will say, oh my goodness, what have you done to you know, open this area up, improve this area? So uh, that's how I know the guy's for real because he can see what changes happened after we inject. But it's real simple, you get a segment Think in terms of chakras if you want to, but the spinal segments are simple. They're included in the si slides here. And like I say, you can do laser massage, heat, stoned, right? You mm -hmm. can lay stones in those areas. That's good too. If you like crystals, you can do that. But that's uh, whatever you want to put together. Well, I'm keeping for the, you past that. <laughs> for, uh, for, for the future, at least, um, we, we have in, in our office, we have we have a whole slew of students from the Arkansas College of Osteopathic Medicine of all places, which isn't anywhere near us, <laughs> but somehow they end up out here. And they're all pretty, everyone who's come through is very enthusiastic and they're very good about, about the, uh, you know, manipulating people. And uh, I got away from it a long time ago. So I let them, I let them have at it. And the patients really well, like it, so. Well, I'm gonna give one story. I'm gonna give one story here. I attended uh, three of the German uh, uh, meetings. Um, and in, uh, in one of the meetings, the last meeting they ever had in Canada, uh, the author, the translator for the book, both, both the text and the uh, uh, manual, instruction manual, injection manual, uh, was from Switzerland. And um, he had an elbow pain, an elbow pain that the top massage therapist, hands-on people in Europe, injection therapy, he translated every word of the book. His wife was a neural therapist and she understood acupuncture and homeopathy. They had tried everything in the world for this author's uh, pain in his arm and they were never able to uh, uh, correct it over a period of years and he was still miserable with it. So uh, Dr. Hunica said, Dr. Burgess, do you think there's anything we can do with his elbow? And they were open. They said, we're a family, we're trying to find answers. You have something new, we're all for it. And I said, well, maybe. And then I said, would you mind if I did it without touching? Arthur Lindsay was his name. Would you mind if I did it without touching Arthur Lindsay? It's called osteopathy. And it deals with Fulford and energy follows thought, right? So, and yet without any objection, saying you're a weirdo or go die or anything, they said, sure, let's try it, right? So I did the old ops, ob, osteopathic observation trick where we go in to go out and, uh, and I could see what was going on. And we did the little thing with his elbow, which took about 30 seconds, less than a minute for sure. And he had total relief of pain from then on out, as far as we know. 
So the neurotherapist from Germany's introduction to osteopathy was me. And we were able to accomplish what they were unable to in uh, the injections. However, they also believe it's a combination of therapies that we need, not just the neural therapy. I think did we, I say that like a politician to end on that note? You, you did. You did. You very. You did very. You did very well with that. Thank so. you very. <laughs> okay. Um, any anything to kind of wrap everything up and, and tie it in a bow for us? Uh, no, just that we're open to anyone who's listening now. We are open to anything. We're trying to incorporate. We're trying to be inclusive, and we're trying to avoid the unfortunate situation that existed for about a hundred years which is uh, treat the intelligent people as if they're idiots. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, anybody has anything to say, they can say it. I have a question, Dr. Have a question. Just Dr. Patel. Yeah. A question is, uh, if you have a patient with neuropathic pain, um, where, would you, where would you go for the neural therapy? Wow, that is such a big, big, big question. I think um, I'm a, talking about the lower extremity below knee. Yes. Knee and a foot, okay? Yes, I, I know what you're talking about. It's a difficult situation. And I think if you're dealing with the neuro, um, the neuropathic pain, and I'm not that familiar with it because I'm just getting it myself over the last few years. If someone was to describe what a shooting pain would be, I wouldn't have had any idea what they're talking about. Now I do understand. And I think somewhere within the uh, realm of metabolic syndrome, hormone dysregulation and nutritional deficiencies, uh, we're developing most of the neuropathic pain. And also the, we're dealing, with, this is the rheumatology we have this group deals with autoimmune diseases, deals with, um, inflammatory neurodegeneration, MS, um, you know, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, I had that. So I think with that, that kind of neurodegeneration and demyelinization, you're gonna to have to look at new avenues. One of the avenues is gonna to have to be some real intelligent understanding of hormones, the kind of stuff that Bill talks about, and, and, and also mushrooms. Like lion's mane mushroom may be a reason, a, a thing. Neural therapy, it doesn't alter the function of the neural therapy. You can still do it. You can still see benefit, but it requires more. I think it's a tricky area. Uh, what have you found, especially in the red light? Anything? Well, I'm, I'm trying uh, my patient, but I thought you may have something to add to it. I'm, I'm doing the laser therapy and I'm doing... Uh, different thing, but this is like a post-traumatic, uh, so uh, that's why I, it, it, so it's not related to hormone or it's not related to, but uh, un unfortunately it's bilateral, so. And well, the regular ointments uh, did nothing, local, local treatment, just uh, applying the salve on, on it. So, uh, and it's a very hypersensitive. So we have to also be careful that we don't make him worse. What do you think about uh, cannabis and the neuropathic? Yeah, yeah, he, he's taking the, uh, not cannabis, but um, he's taking CBD, high, high percentage. Okay. I'm thinking that slows the process down for sure. Yeah, because you know, young patient, you don't want to start them on cannabis. They have a whole life to live and we don't want any addiction. So, um, you know, when we don't understand, we can give and, and when they're addicted and then, then we have to look back and see what, what we have done and what we gained from it and sometimes uh, it's it's not a very positive scenario. No, we are going to uh, have an open discussion, like I said, in a week or two or three on uh, cannabis, because we have a couple of real genuine experts here on the cannabis. And, uh, and so anyway, I hope you could join us for that discussion. 
because okay, much you. needs to be said and um, to look at all sides of the issue. Yeah, we have Dr. Block's uh, volunteer to uh, give us a, a little uh, <clears throat> primer on August 10th, which is two weeks from now. And the week after that, actually, I have Dr. Bourne coming back. You remember he gave us that, uh, that bang up job on autoimmune, you know, uh, how to uh, approach auto, an autoimmune patient. Um, he's coming back. He's going to do chronic fatigue for us on August 17th. Um, I still need somebody for next week. Dr. Zarin, are you available? We're going to pick on the new, we're going to pick on the new person. So and she gave some great talks at, uh, I met her at the global webinar. The third was the third one, global webinar on alternative and traditional medicine. So I'm not sure exactly where I fit in on all of those, but uh, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere on that spectrum. So um, well, if I can... Uh uh, Kent Crowley is on and Jeff is Jeff Block is on. If you're looking for something specifically for next week, do you do want to do the 30 minute update on cannabis followed by a half an hour of discussion? Well, I think we have we have Dr. Block for August 10th. So that's two weeks. Oh, oh that's two weeks. All right. Never mind. Okay. So, Never mind. All right. We'll get you're muted, Dr. All right, that was my you. problem all the time. I mute myself go. and I talk. <laughs> That's how it is. Um, I have a quick question about the, the injection. So um, that you said that it caused cellular communications. And um, what's the preparation? Is it the allo allo allopathic kind of made uh, injection, or what is it made made of? Just um, water and uh, lidocaine. Are you asking oh. what the, it's 1% lidocaine. So I think that means 1% lidocaine, 99% water with no other additives to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is not allopathic medication. How? Light, lidocaine, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, d I guess that depends who names it. You could call it allopathic medication. It's a drug. So it's not something found in nature. So it's definitely a man-made drug. So it's allopathic. Okay. And I think they're good allopathic medicines and scary allopathic medicines. So this, mm -hmm. had, this just happens to be a really big, big discovery. So mm -hmm. it's like they invent, discovered a lot of things in the 30s and 40s that even today are the most profound chemical discoveries in relationship to medicine. <laughs> It's not a straight or cortisone family. It's completely oh, no, different. No, yeah, opposite. It's completely different. Opposite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when I first started with this, my big question for all of the Germans, what's the bad news? What's the bad news? What's the bad news? Because with steroids, it's usually three shots and you're done for the year. So most people didn't go beyond three shots a year. So what happens if you do three shots in the month of January and you feel like hell for the rest of the year? And no one ever had an answer in the United States for that. It was just, well, let's sneak in some more cortisone injections. So you might do six in a year instead of three. Um, but I always thought there would be something negative with the lidocaine. So I was suspicious. And then after a million injections, I really, it, it took me 12 years before I realized, oh my gosh, everything the Germans told me was true. It is safe. It's unbelievably safe. And I guess there are a few drugs that are really, really safe. Wow. But uh, it's great. usually if well, it's safe and it doesn't have a patent on it, not everybody's promoting it because you don't make as much profit. But it's still a wonderful drug. I think it's the most used drug in emergency rooms. Well, Dr. Zarin, it's Dr. Block, who may be the uh, only allopathic call. So, um, I understand what your reference is to, is it allopathic or not? But Dr. Burgess rec you know, was talking about lidocaine now preceded by procaine. Uh, if it'll put it more in a botanical context, around the time that procaine was first being synthesized, it was largely because the local anesthetic properties of cocaine were done. So whether they be amide or ester local anesthetics as two different families, their origins are firmly rooted in plant medicines. Mm -hmm. 
other side effects, of course, but uh, nevertheless, they're great for still numbing up the ear, nose, and throat. And a lot of docs who uh, consider the talks I give on cannabis being schedule one are surprised to learn that cocaine is schedule two, not prohibited, legal, tightly controlled, but uh, still has medical use daily, usually in drops that pledges get in, in the nose and, and uh, for, for nasal surgery. It just, it's, it's a unique anesthetic cocaine because in of itself, it also is a vasoconstrictor. So when you're using lidocaine, like Dr. Burgess is mentioning, to get that longer effect, or even the vasoconstrictive effects, being that all other local anesthetics have vasodilation properties, you add back in some adrenaline, epinephrine with it, to minimize that type of, of bleeding, if you're going to use it around the nose in particular. But cocaine is, is still a staple with your nose and throat surgeons for that reason. And that's why Dr. Black is in Miami. Because of cocaine? Yeah, I saw, I saw the TV show, Miami oh, Vice. Yeah, and that also was about 40 years ago when I'm finishing medical school, so <laughs> you're dating yourself. Yes, I am. Okay. Well, I oh, let's see what else. I had something important, but I forgot it. Um, that's okay. Everything I had was in the slides. And I did have a lot of references in there, like the uh, images of the uh, segmental therapies, other techniques, the list of books that can be extremely helpful. Someone mentioned Travell. Her book is there. Dr. Raven's book in prolotherapy is there. The manual on neural therapeutic injections is there. So everything you need to learn pretty much on injections would be within those three books. And uh, they're all excellent. Well done. Thank you guys for giving me an opportunity to speak. Thank you, John. And anybody have any questions, uh, either put it in the chat or um, uh, unmute yourself and ask. We're, 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 we're not uh, shy here, so. And I'd like to thank you too, John. Mr. Dr. Burgess, I'd like to thank you too. I'm Brian, Brian O'Donnell. Hey, Brian. Hey, by the way, one of the things I was going to mention tonight, this group seems to have a strong patient uh, advocacy organization or, you know, fringe that's uh, helping us out with all of this stuff. It's not only doctors trying to find out how to keep their patients alive. We're trying to keep our families alive and our patients are trying to keep their families alive. And now with the... Uh, with the problems with autoimmune and COVID, we need to uh, share a lot. I'd love to be a part of it. Just let me know what I need to do. You got it. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Clearfield, for uh, inviting me to the to sure. the. Uh, please, please program. come. Please, please, please participate. Don't be a stranger. Don't be quiet. Dr. Zarin, thank you so much um, you. for coming. And I'm going to twist your arm this week to speak for us next week, okay? So For sure. Oh, you want me to speak next week? <laughs> yes, if, if you can. Of course. Okay. I, of I'll course. Be On what topic? On um, what topic? Uh, you know, we, we're, we're pretty much open to anything. We, we, we pride ourselves on being, if, if you hang around now, you're going you're gonna to hear uh, our tale of woe as uh, we, we discuss uh, we're, 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 we're attempting to, to change our uh, focus slightly from, because we're, we're rheumatic diseases to integrative medicine. And of course the powers that be, are, you know, instead of just saying, yes, go for it, um, they, they, started throw, they start throwing ridiculous rocks at us. So I have to send them a, a uh, I have to send them an answer. So we're gonna talk about that. But, um, you know, what, what you discussed at the, uh, you know, on the webinar, um, you know, uh, with uh, Dr. Sheikh uh, would be terrific. Okay, we're, we do um, hormone replacement, we do rheumatology, we do integrative oncology, um, cannabis, um, we do, um, uh, what does Dr. Halasa do exactly? Um, um, Dr. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Patel, if you're still here, tell us exactly. I don't know, something about methylene blue and um, nanoparticles. That, that's, about, that's, what I, that's what I get out of that. So uh, I don't quite understand it, but um, or Dr. Ortel, you're still you're still here. Maybe you can you can give us. Yeah, a... he does um, things with laser photo uh, dynamic, dynamic therapy. therapy. Yeah, 
chronic disease management using as many modalities as will help the patient. And so if you're doing something and it's good and you can add something more and make it better, that's what he's about. Right, so he's quite the character. Um, I'm sure uh, doc, Dr. Sheikh would like to have him on his webinar too. So we'll, 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 we'll get him hooked up there too. So um, yeah, the reason I ask is because I am, I'm a homeopath. So if there's any interest about homeopathy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it's right up our it's it's right up our alley. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it is. Right. Hey, we're, we're, we're we're the we're the anti allopaths here. So. Okay. <laughs> Doctor Zarin, I'm writing a book on homeopathy, but I don't know anything. Will you help me? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Hey. <laughs> Where are you from? I I'm Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. I'm in Toronto. That's close. So I hope we can communicate. Absolutely. We're, so, uh, I'm interested that's in- That's the reason I'm here. I want to connect. <laughs> but the, um, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Anton Jayasuria. He was a United Nations acupuncturist, teacher, writer, and he wrote a lot on homeopuncture. So I studied with him and how you combine homeopuncture or acupuncture with homeopathy. And there's a mm -hmm. whole and there's a whole segment of science that goes back to the uh, 1920s, I believe, 1929. And there were homeopaths that were making major discoveries about acupuncture. Right. By, a <laughs> by accident. So anyway, I would I am working on that. So I would love if I have permission to chat with you about this. Absolutely, anytime. So I try to, to join your group as often as I can. And um, definitely, just um, if you want me to give you my contact information, yes, um, or you can join our group, Dr. William, you can, you can um, bring Dr. John to our group, okay. our Telegram group, mm -hmm. so. Right, okay, I will do. And if we could get your, your contact information also, so okay. you know, you get um, our mail. You'll get our mailings. You can either put it in the chat or you can put it on the other thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on chat. So uh, okay. to everyone or just to John? I don't know. Um, uh, well, send it. Send it to me. I'm the one who controls. I it. send it to you. So okay. You can send it to John. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I'm gonna send all my um, information here. All very, right. Very, so very, very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, we're we we are the eclectic group in the in the in the AOA. Uh, we. Uh, we, they, we, they, they discount us all the time and we, we, we surprise them uh, time and time again. And, uh, and we win the dance contest too when they have their, when they have them there. <laughs> so uh, it's, a, it's, it, it's a fivefold. So, um, okay. Um, anybody else have anything for um, Dr. For John uh, on our, uh, uh, you know, on today's topics? Um, I will get um, anybody who wants uh, or some of our newcomers uh, uh, contacts, please uh, let me know and I will get it to you. And um, the, anybody, you know, any of the new folks, uh, make sure that we have you on our mailing list. Dr. Zarin, you're gonna be uh, on our, in our, um, in our database now. So. Okay, thank you. Please, please don't, uh, please don't uh, threaten to, send the uh, attorney general of California after me for fraud, like somebody else did. Um, that's, those are the kinds of things we deal with. So that's, okay. Dr. William, I sent, I sent my information. So I got please it. Pass, pass it to Dr. John, I appreciate it. Got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, I got it. And uh, we will send it out to anybody and I will be in touch with you or next week. Yes. That's okay with yes. you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank that you. Was awesome. <laughs> okay, anybody wants to stick around, we're going to have a pseudo board meeting. Um, I, I really don't have anything to hide. Anybody who, who'd like to, to listen and participate, uh, please stick around. Um, is Dr. Spear still on or no? I know Dr. Dr. Renz is here, and please unmute so we can talk to you. Uh, um. 
Dr. William, if you allow me, I can leave and you can, I will yeah. join Don't, you again next okay. week. Okay, good. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank nice you. Nice meeting you all. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Renza, Dr. Dr. Zinni. You could, uh, I'm staying. This is Marie. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm not even tempted to put my picture up here. So well, we can see your neck, actually. <laughs> I, I can't see, can see me at can all. See, we can see your <laughs> the top teeth. of my hair. You know, we got oh, your teeth. Oh, there. Okay. We got your we got your neck and your and your mouth. <laughs> okay. I don't have anything. So, okay. Um anybody else who's sticking around, um, you know, please unmute so we can we can uh, you know sort of yeah. talk to each other. Dr. Block, please, if you're hanging around. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to hear what the pushback right, so, was on integrative medicine. All right. So, so, you know, for 49 years, we've been the American Osteopathic Society of Rheumatic Diseases. It was the um, family practice wing of uh, rheumatic diseases. And apparently, and Dr. Renza, if you, you can, if you can talk to us, um, I see you there. Um, it was, um, you know, a fairly robust group at one point. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the old guard, um, you know, has, has kind of moved on. And those of you who don't know, by the way, Dr. Nagley passed away, I think it was in January. Um, and, uh, uh, it was, it was kind of landed in my lap and Dr. Burgess and, uh, the AOA apparently has been trying to shut this outfit down for a long, way longer than, than, than I've been around. Um, some of you the old timers, you know, John, you, you, you know more about it than I do, obviously. Um, the first, the first year that I, uh, I, I kind of, kind of, kind of fell in my lap, we had $922 in, in our checking account. And, um, I was told we had a conference. They get, I had two months to put it together and it was at a hotel in, uh, in Reno and it was in a hotel room, literally not a, not a, not a classroom, not a ballroom in a hotel room. So we we did some scrambling and um, we actually made a success of it. During the conference, the AOA sent a spy. If you remember, uh, Gloria Dillard showed up um, to ostensibly to, to you know shut us down. And uh, what happened was that uh, she was so impressed with our work that we ended up getting a four year uh, accreditation. Um, the the max you can get from the AOA is five. So um, you know it was a uh, it was it was quite the coup. I think some of them were kind of disappointed. Uh, Dr. Spear and Dr. Renzi, you know, they're, they're the you know the the ones who uh, wore the brunt of, of 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 the sort of the negativity. So um, last uh, the second year we grew. We I mean we doubled our size, but it was you know we went from uh, thirty to to about sixty, um, which was okay. But um, you know we're kind of limited uh, when I when I send out. Um, information from the American Osteopathic Society of Rheumatic Diseases. You know, a lot of times I'm told, well, you know, I'm not a rheumatologist. So we, we've been in discussions about what we can do about this because we really want to grow the group. Um, I'm, a, I'm an A4M graduate and uh, with the American Academy of Medi Medical Acupuncture, or, uh, yeah, that too, um, uh, uh, anti-aging medicine. And I've spoken there on, on a number of occasions um, and then uh, I'm also affiliated with the Age Management Medical Group. Um, they get a thousand doctors. Half of them are always new. Um, the a A4M gets two to four thousand doctors in Las Vegas in, in you know, easily uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Vegas in December. Um, and when we do our, our live programs, especially at OMED, um, you know, the last time it was, it was quite, quite the scene. They put us in this little tiny room. We had standing room only. We had sitting room only. They moved us twice to bigger rooms. We had a, we had a, a, a head count of 600 out of 2,700 um, 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 uh, physicians, you know, that were registered for the, for the, for the conference. And you remember there were 14 subspecialties, including family practice and internal medicine. So for us to get 600, you know, in a room at, at, at one time is, is, is really, um, you know, really uh, quite, quite, a, quite a feat, actually. And the, com the, you know, the comments and the, and the, the comebacks are, were always, we, we, you, know, we made, um, you know, we make CMEs interesting again. We, you know, we make, we make the, uh, you know, we make, make it that you, you want to come to, they, they want to come to our programs. 
but you know our our moniker is uh, rheumatic diseases and it's quite limited so we we spent a, a, a good fair amount of time um discussing this and then i just went ahead kind of took a breath and went ahead and i i rewrote our bylaws and i sent a letter to the aoa's uh, head honchos uh and to uh, rename our 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 subspecialty the american osteopathic association remember that's aoa of in integrative medicine um I wrote a, a, a um, I forget how long it was. I think I, I wrote about an, a 10 page paper on, on uh, comparing the, the, uh, the principles of osteopathic medicine, you know, those high principles that they talk about uh, and compare it to, you know, what, what, we, what we've, uh, you know, distilled as integrative medicine and how, how they match, you know, word for word. Um, we had a, we, we had a, um, uh, we had a meeting uh, with one of their, their committees about a month ago, and um, I, I, I was kind of excited because uh, actually the, uh, he's now president-elect, so next year he will be president, and his name is Ernie Gell. But we were actually partners. We actually shared office space and shared call for many years. Um, so Ernie decided to recruit himself, <laughs> recruit himself and say that it, he would be biased, so... Um, he kind of, uh, uh, kind of, sort of stepped out of the, out of that role. So anyway, um, I sent uh, the the board members. I sent them the letter that I got. And basically, they they they, they, they kind of dance. They, they came up with red herrings, and as far as I'm concerned, that we were duplicating other other subspecialties, and um, uh, we were um, we were essentially forming a new organization. I took our bylaws and I changed the name to integrative medicine and anything that, that just made sense. They picked one word out of all of the bylaws, which were, really wasn't a change from, from uh, what, what was there. There was, there was a whole list of, uh, there's a list on, on the first page. If anybody wants it, let me know, I'll send it to you. Um, there's a, there's a, a list of our areas of expertise and one of them, and this was not a change for, this was in the bylaws that we had written um, four years ago. There was no change here, but it said, it said new injection techniques. And they, they got, one guy got all excited about new injection techniques. So, um, so I, I haven't told you this, John, I took the new out. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then they were concerned that our, our focus would not be on rheumatology. Now that in that same list, the very, the same list where it says new injection techniques, and you pick that out, at the very top, the very first um, uh, uh, item of what, what our focus is, is rheumatology and autoimmunity, the very first. So they can't say that they didn't see it. So if we picked out new injection techniques, they had to see that because that was way down in the, in, the, in the middle of the list. So, so I have to answer them that are we starting a new um, organization, are we starting a new subspecialty, which in my mind, we're not. Um, but how, how do I put it? And then their, their thing was we are we're we're duplicating other others, which again I I, I don't see I don't see it in, in the least that we're duplicating any, any anybody else. In fact, you know we're the leaders. Um, you Is know we're not the follow we're duplicating others. Are you talking about their? Are they referring to? Well, they could say you know fa you know family practice does integrative medicine family practice does nutrition does does uh, so the bitch is the bitch isn't with rheumatology it's with the word integrative medicine right but we don't see integrative medicine in any other special well they're saying that it, that, that integrative medicine is is duplicating every other specialty <laughs> oh gee, whoa yeah so I, i'm not sure how to answer that and they came up with that i don't even know i don't even know where that came from so <laughs> i need to say I need to send them an answer. Um, uh, anybody have any ideas? <laughs> so, yeah, I do. If you add the word functional into it, does how much does that change that? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> because that modification, making things more functional, I mean, that's what all doctors should do, but um, does that- you have, to, you have to remember, we're, just, we're talking about, and, and you know, Please don't take this the wrong way. Uh, we're talking about Neanderthals who, you know, stick their head in the sand and, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're the AMA wannabes. You know, they say they're, they're different, but they're really not. 
Well, um, I understand because they've been trying to um, decrease the amount of um, osteopathic manipulative techniques that are being taught at the schools and limiting the, the time and also the amount of techniques, you know, um, so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I, you know, I, I'm not near a school, so I don't know. But like I said, I have students who come through here, and the students, at least the ones from Arkansas, and you know, that, that, that this was their first graduating class, they were pretty good. I mean, they, they were doing things that one I never saw before, and or two that I, I'd forgotten about 35 years ago. So <laughs> I thought they were, I thought they were, they do a pretty darn good job of that. But, um, you know, if no, we, I, have, I have some thoughts on, on what you're yes. talking about, because we've encountered the same thing in allopathic medicine part of it are well there are two different things one are turf wars so that they're probably saying well if you talk about this aspect of something that is complementary or integrative and part of part of the problem is they don't understand the difference of the words so there's almost a knee-jerk response when somebody says the word alternative because they think you're automatically dissing the advances that Western medicine's made in diagnostics and therapeutics. Yeah, well, well, and it's not that at all. It, what it is, it's integrating in a collaborative way, sort of, in many respects, certain traditional Eastern medicine with Western medicine. And, and it's not to dismiss that an Eastern medicine, uh, say, practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine who may want their patient to have several different herbs is practicing witchcraft, then at least from the allopathic lack of understanding, it's even more sensitive than I think you osteopaths appreciate the way that the body integrates with its surroundings. So one issue is the people who are sitting in judgment are very often big on themselves and, and powerful and sort of set in their ways. But it is a political process when you bring it through the AOA, the same way we're doing now in Florida through the FMA with cannabis to recognize that it has value, but not necessarily the way people think that, oh, well, how could that possibly work if it impacts this department, that department, <coughs> another department? So your, your situation can be handled politically also uh, by your all voting members of your association, aren't you, of your organization? So uh, some when are, you have some business are. meetings, can you, can you bring up a resolution that at least they appoint an ad hoc committee to look into, you know, the 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 premise potential and the value of integrative medicine, or call it complementary practices, or whatever other things you want, because it exists. And even in allopathic medicine, you've got something called the Osher Institute, which came from big money. A lot of this is money driven, and you just told me you're kind of poor. But the uh, money-driven fact is that integrative medicine is introduced through family medicine departments, by the way. So I think that's an excellent starting point. But no. those institutes that now are part of that program in allopathic medicine include UCSF, Northwestern, Harvard, Vanderbilt, the University of Miami. Those now are the five institutions throughout the country. It's catching yeah. on. In my letter, which I'm looking at right now, if anybody wants, I can send it to you. I, I listed 17 uh, allopathic uh, um, fellowships recognized by the American Board of uh, Physician Specialties um, in uh, integrative medicine at the University of Arizona, um, Sutter, Santa Rosa, UCLA, UCSF, George Washington University, Osher, like you said, Tufts University, University of Michigan, um, Ohio University, uh, Wheel uh, Cornell, um, there's 17, Thomas Jefferson, um, 17 uh, um, integrative medicine uh, um, uh, fellowships. Um, MD All of fellowship. those started in Arizona. Right, I know. And it's Andy Weil, the pediatrician right. who's right. now probably pushing 80, but right. he's lived this before. He would be a great person to send an email to and say, do you have any ideas on how to approach this for its value as far as an independent platform? Okay. All right. Well, we'll find him. I knew I actually knew I actually knew him before he had a beard, if you can believe that. So you so those of you know know who Andy Weil is, you know, he's one of the uh, eight, uh, you know, integrative medicine gurus and he has a beard that makes uh, uh, that would make John John Burgess blush. So or or Joel over here. Not Joel. So, so Joel, um, 
Joe so, was so, scary. And by the way, I just want to say that we're talking about integrated medicine, integrated medicine, integrated medicine. And even with Andy Weil and these other fellowships in integrated medicine, I think we still have not had a real definition of integrated as far as our concepts go. By the way, I think one of the ways we're going to overcome this word integrated is by showing that, and they're saying you're taking a piece of every specialty, right? That's what somehow, they're saying. Well, but there's one thing that every other affiliate and every other specialty is not done. And that's what we can do. And that's develop a methodology that allows for integration and collaboration, just right. like Dr. Block said. Right. But, and, and that methodology is seen in, we're in their face. If you look at our logo, you have three pillars and that is uh, safety, effectiveness, and cost. If we look at all of these different elements from acupuncture, brain surgery, to drugs, we should look at the methodology of uh, safety, effectiveness, and cost. And if we did that, we would be the only affiliate that does that within any kind of uh, right. educated so, med medical So, so, so in, in my letter, I, I, I defined what we, uh, what we consider is integrative medicine and, and see if you agree with this. Uh, one, an evidence-based comprehensive approach to care. Integrative medicine means a combination of evidence-based conventional medicine and alternative medicine. Two, treating the whole person, not a condition or disease. All factors that influence health, biological, behavioral, psychosocial, and environmental factors are considered. Three, sets the foundation for overall health. Integrative medicine involves building the groundwork for improved overall health. Examples are immune system, uh, uh, for the immune system include uh, nutritional status, inflammatory encounters, hormone imbalances, environmental concerns, um, in, in, <clears throat> et cetera. For preventing future health issues before they arise, integrative medicines focuses on preventative medicines via proactively addressing medical issues. And five, it can apply to both primary and specialty care. It involves not only primary care, but integrative psychiatry, pain management, gastroenterology, and oncology. That's what I sent to them, okay? Has it, has it been sent already? Yeah, they, I sent that oh. before that the, before they came up with this, that, that we're, we're duplicating everybody else. Uh, now, I, I, now, my, my only comment is I think the word alternative is one of those knee jerk words they hear and then they push back hard. Complimentary in that sense, we get the same message across. Okay. As a patient, I want that doctor. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, and that's, <laughs> That's where your feedback needs to be too. I don't know if it helps to have a whole bunch of feedback from patients, but. All right, so. Do. What do you need, uh, Marie, what'd you say you needed that document? I said, I want that doctor. That doctor. That he just <laughs> described. Oh, yeah. that's a bill. Okay, so <laughs> so that, that that's what I put in, in, in our bylaws as, as, as you know, our kind of ideal. Now, just to compare, <clears throat> Um, I took this off of the AOA's website. Osteopathic medicine treats the patient, whole person approach to hands-on care. Osteopathic physicians believe there's more to good health in the absence of pain or disease. Osteopathic medicine is a distinct branch of medicine that emphasizes the interrelated unity of all systems in the body, each working with each other to heal in times of illness. DOs look beyond symptoms to understand lifestyle and environmental factors. DOs practice medicine according to the latest science and technology, but consider options to complement pharmaceuticals and surgery. I mean, that's, you know, you say potato, I say potato. That's, that, that's, the AO, that's what the AOA says. You know, that's their ideal. So um, that's a good reason. Isn't that a good reason for them to not want us to act like we're something special and they want all osteopaths to act like that? Well, that's what they're saying. Hey, Bill, in, yeah. in comparison, it has similar what you just read. If you go to the Arizona Institute, the Andy Weil one, and they first right at the top of their website always says, what is integrative medicine? And it's just, you know, two sentences, the same kind of things. But listen to how close this is to what you just said. Integrative medicine is healing oriented medicine that takes account of the whole person, including all aspects of lifestyle. It emphasizes the therapeutic relationship between practitioner and patient, is informed by evidence, and makes use of all appropriate therapies. Right. So, you know, it's, you know, I, I you know, 
you know, this, this business that will, you know, well, everybody's duplicating everybody else. I mean, if you, if you, you know, the neurologists are duplicating the, the, the internal medicine people, they're duplicating the, the, I mean, you can say that about anybody, right? The family practice people are duplicating the internal medicine people when vice versa. Um, then we're not dealing with duplication. We're dealing with well. That's 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 oh, their, oh. their 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 one. They're saying we're duplicating everything, and two, we're forming a new organization, which you know is yeah. so. Bill, I don't, I don't know where that came from, but that's 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 the that's what I have to answer them. How how do I answer them? Should we go so with forming a new organization? You yes. said no. So, Bill, how about uh, throwing it kind of back at them? And I think it was Dr. Ching mentioned functional. So ditch integrative and throw in functional interrelated medicine. And then thereby using the interrelated term that's in the AOA verbiage. Uh, All right. But, but, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, one of our problems is if when I send, when I send out our flyers, is, you know, not, not to the folks here, but to, you know, you guys are all the Kool-Aid drinkers, um, you know, but to, you know, I, I have, you know, my database and, and this and that. And I get, well, I don't, we don't want you, you're a rheumatologist. I'm not a rheumatologist. That's what I get. I said, like, I said, well, what if I sent you a thing? And I said, I was, we were integrative medicine. Now they're going to pay attention. And that's the, that's yeah. the issue. That's the issue. I agree. That's the issue, right? Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see that. I don't quite frankly, that we're going to do anything different than, than we're doing now. I mean, if you look at our, our you know, at our programs, don't, you know, the, so Marie and, and Dr. Block and anybody else who's new, who's new, go over, go look at the webinars that we've done over the last six months. I mean, you'll see there, you know, there's a, a little bit of a, a scatter to it. You know, Dr. Halas you know, puts his methylene blue uh, stuff in there, but. but <laughs> okay, but, I, have um, a, I have a comment on this. Yes. So can we just like with the AOA, keep it as rheumatic? And then you know how legally, um, you could be a business, have a business name like DBA something else. So can you can can you stay rheumatic medicine and then like DBA as advertise as um, uh, integrative functional medicine? Would that be possible so that we don't have to jump through this hoop? Um, well, you know we have we have our so-called integrative health alliance. Um, so, you know, we, we've used that. If you look at, if you look at our, you know, every, every, uh, everything we send out has that name on it also. Um, Correct. So that's again, what I'm saying. Like, again, the, pro the problem, the, the, the issue that, that, that I, that I, that I would like to resolve is that we, we ever, we can advertise ourselves, you know, as an AOA sanctioned subspecialty in integrative medicine. That's, you know, I think that would be a winner. Okay, and, yes. and why they why they would have come up with these ridiculous objections is beyond me, other than just being you know stubborn. Um, Does the AOA itself have your name, your existing name, as oh yeah. part of the bylaws? Because oh yeah. if they do, okay, well then that may be your problem at heart, because there is a constitutional basis by which those bylaws would need to be changed. And I know, I, I, I agree. I've re I've rewrote. Re First of all, it, the, the bylaws that we have now, I personally wrote. No, not your bylaws. The no, AOA. No, the, the, the AOA. No, the, our bylaws for the you know AOSRD. I wrote those personally. Um, I'm talking they, about does the AOA yeah. bylaws specify your name the way it is? Oh, I don't know. I, I, that, that that, that came, could be that a real before. sticky wicket for who can determine a change in the bylaws. Well, we we apply to the the appropriate uh, you know committees. This is mm -hmm. the answer I got. This is the answer I got. So, um, so I like I said, I have to send them an answer. Um, and uh, uh, anybody who knows me knows that I don't take no for an answer. So I, I just need to be able to do it <laughs> diplomatic diplomatically because, quite frankly, I don't think the whole thing's a, a waste of time and a bunch of baloney. Those committees are going to have a problem then, don't they? Don't they? You? What do you mean? They're going to, they've got to get your wrath there. You're, you're determined. So those committees oh. will have to deal with you someday. They're going to keep, they're going to deal with me till we get our way. <laughs> just, I just like to, I really wanted to get this done. I thought we could just, you know, get this done 
so that we could we could you know for this thing coming up in 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 October that we could advertise ourselves as integrative medicine. Can you imagine, John, the the, the crowd we would have? You know, the family practice people. I think that's part of the problem. The family practice people would probably be you know you know you know looking with their their nose in, in you know in in our door. Uh, they, uh, I already invited family practice today in an afternoon session on um, cannabis. So that would be Dr. Crowley and Doc, um, Dr. Block also. But the, the family practice people have been very friendly, helpful, and they want to work with us. They're not involved with a bunch of complications. So, but I do want to say one thing, because I don't know if I got the idea through or not. We are using whatever we can use from whatever subject we could do. Uh, 40 years ago, when we started the student organization, we had 13 different specialty organizations that were involved in our student organization that was seen as an integrative organization. And so all of these people have different information, but I don't think that any of the affiliates have what they would consider methods of integration. What is the proper way to integrate? What is the healthy, humane, civil way to integrate? Nobody discusses those issues. And I think our organization could be the one organization that does openly uh, discuss those issues. And that's cost, effectiveness, and uh, safety. So we could be the big safety guy. We wear little badges. We're the safety guys. <laughs> we'll get you that little that little white thing that you had when we were in, uh, you know, in school, right? Yes. So anyway, so, I don't think anybody's really dealing with the subject of uh, the verb methods of integration. I mean, how do well, if you have all this information, what do you use first? That's what it will come down to. What do you use most? And I don't think there really is any honest analysis of that type of situation yet. And we should be the ones who do it. Okay. Well, okay. Um. By the way, by the way, you know what the big punchline is to the safety, effectiveness, and cost? The things that are the safest are usually the most effective and cost the least. So if you really apply these principles to it, you get the common sense. Yeah. So, and again, so, so one, one of the things that, you know, they, 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 they brought up and then they'll bring up again is that, you know, we're just attracting kooks and crazy people and, you know, uh, snake oil salesmen. So They're talking about you, Marie. Hey, <laughs> with that, I'm proud of it. <laughs> Yay. We should, we should be proud of, we should be proud of that. Right. Yes. So, yes. um, no, anybody I talk to, when I say integrative, they're in. So right. that's yeah. how, that's the patient outlook. They hear that word, they're in. Right. All other aspects of doctoring, most people just roll their eyes. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. We don't trust doctors anymore. So this is the best, gosh, you guys got it all. Yeah. So, and it, so and it, you know, and we, it should be in the name. I understand yeah, where you're coming so, from. Yeah. So, and and so, you know, we sent them, um, you know, a, a core curriculum uh, that we were going to develop for, um, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a core core body of, of information. Um, we have to have a a residency to be able to do a board certification, but we can certainly do a certification of uh, competency. And we may be able to hook on with one of these, um, um, you know, integrative um, fellowships, and, and be able to, to to use that as a um, as a, as a kind of a platform for our, um, uh, you know, as a training program too. So I've been in contact with a couple of them, and most of both of them, the two that I've been in contact with says, get back to us when you you can get the, um, uh, you know. When you, when you get the name change. So we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Like I said, I was hoping to get this done so that, you know, when, when, when the, the OMED people show up, so those of you who don't know what it is, it's, a, it's usually any, well, before the shutdown, there usually anywhere from three to 5,000 DOs show up to one of these things. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a big gathering. Um, um, so, um, I mean, I have a couple of ideas. Anybody be able to give me, you know, put it down into any type of concrete thing. Send me an email if you want to. Um, I want to uh, 
I want to kind of send them something by the end of the week. Um, by, by the way, I'm, I'm, I get to go to Vegas, yay, in July, uh, 114 at midnight <laughs> um, for NOMA and the Nevada Osteopathic Medical Association. They're, you know, they've been very helpful with us too. Um, usually I, I get to uh, do a couple hour lecture with, with them and I, I, you know, I bill myself as, you know, you know our group, the AOSRD, that, that we're kind of uh, partners. Um, so um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be down there and it's also on Zoom, you know, any of the DOs who, you know, need credit, um, but I'll, I'll let you know what the contact is. So, um, so that's that. <laughs> Um, that, 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 I mean, that, that's that, um, we're not quite as poor as we used to be. Um, we have about $30,000 in the bank now, you know, over, over, over the last couple of years, um, the AOA sends us some money for, for OMED. Uh, we actually made some money this year on that, on that zoom conference that we did in March, um, that I was really concerned about because the, 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 the IT people kind of, uh, uh, they didn't quite do what they were supposed to do, but uh, I was able to get get some of their fees uh, uh, reduced. So we actually made a little bit of money on that. Um, and uh, you know, our biggest expenses are are actually the accounting because you know we're a nonprofit organization, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I have a formal accountant. So um, they cost us uh, two thousand dollars a year and forty dollars a month. Anybody who knows it can do it for less. Let me know. Um, but you know, there's all the you know uh, IRS reporting forms uh, that that and they do it all. So, and I I don't want to know how to do it, and I don't quite have the time for it. So, that's really our biggest expense, except you know when we do uh, um, you know our our program. So, um, I'm planning on doing uh, the March program in Vegas. I haven't quite uh, got the um, venue yet. Um, uh, you know, the consensus was to take it out of Reno and problem with Reno is it's too hard to get to, especially on the East Coast. Um, it's, it's one or two or three plane, plane rides, and it gets to be expensive. Um, Vegas is usually one plane ride from pretty much anywhere in the country. Um, and I looked at Scottsdale, which, you know, is a nicer venue, but um, it's really expensive. Um, I didn't find a, any place that had a hotel room for less than 275 hours a night. Um, Vegas, we can still get a, a pretty good, pretty good rate. Um, uh, anybody has any other, I haven't signed a contract yet. So anybody has any, any issue, any questions or anything. And Kent, if you're still there, I'm still trying to get hold of the, the Ahern hotel people. Um, uh, but they, they don't seem to answer. <laughs> so really, I, yeah. I know that they're still finishing up their, their, uh, build out. Yeah. So, so but the Weston hotel there is, is reasonable. Um, Bailey's is, is reasonable, um, and uh, uh, the uh, Mirage, believe it or not, is more reasonable. Those are all on the strip. Uh, Nomo always goes to this, the Sun Coast, which is all the way out in Summerlin. It's about 15 miles from the strip, and I guess that's even more reasonable, but um, I don't know. If, you know, We're going to have people coming from hopefully all over. They want to they go that far out. So that's that. John's putting together our program for OMED. Um, again, anybody who's, who's interested, it's, it's a hybrid. So there's um, online and, um, and in person, it's in Phoenix. Um, it was something else. I don't know. I forget what the other something else was. But Hey, Bill, what's the room block you're promising for Las Vegas? What's that? What's the room block you're promising? Um, I, th I think we're going to be able to get it between 150 and 199. That's about the best I can do on the strip. What I was referring to is how many rooms are you promising? Oh, uh, 15. That's it? Yeah. We okay. don't have that big a group unless we become integrated medicine. Then, then we're going to have to, <laughs> we're going to have to buy out the Venetian like A4M does. Wow. Okay. You know, you know I mean, I mean, Brino's still the bargain. You want to know the truth but yeah. um but uh and you know it would be easier for you and me because we're here um but um you know the consensus was they, they wanted to go someplace that was a little easier to get to and uh you know a little bit more uh I don't know, upscale are you still looking at february march yeah mm -hmm. okay i'll i'll check around okay see what i come up with 
uh, last year when we decided we thought we might might be able to get it in in March, you know, live here in Reno, we we, we looked at the Atlantis, which was um, pretty reasonable, um, and that's a nice hotel. That's probably the second nicest hotel you know, next to the Pepper Mill where we've been before. The Pepper Mill's still not booking any any uh, any uh, programs, so uh, I think I guess they're changing their focus. You know, that's a pretty nice place, except for the smoke, right, John? Right. Whatever you say, Bill. Yeah. Well, you would hate it out here. We've had smoke in the, in, in, in the air for three, four days now here from the fires around here. So my wife, my wife was looking at a house near the volcano in Hawaii today. So it's all the same to me. <laughs> OK, um, anybody else have any questions? Dr. Dr. Renza, can you talk? Are you there at all? He says he's still connecting to audio. I know he sent me a he sent me a text message that it, it dropped off or something. It says he says it, it, his Zoom connection fell off and he couldn't get back on, and he can't doesn't know how to unmute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. I'm gonna drop off the call. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody, if, if that's, that's, um, you know, I kind of got my marching orders here. I'll, uh, I'll come up with something. And if you want, I'll send it to you before I send it to them. Um, or should I just, you know, bull ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead. But, you yes. know, what you, what you sent them before was near perfect. And they they didn't even. Look, I don't even think they looked at it. You know, you were on the call with me. Did they? They didn't even look at it. Yeah. They had no idea what was on there. You know, you know, he picked out picked out one word in those bylaws that was, like I said, was below. You know, they said, "Well, you're not going to be a rheumatology focus." They said, "Rheumatology is right at the top of the list." And we can get we can get around this silliness. That's not a big deal. But I'd like to have it done. I did speak with our design and logo guy today, who's trying to get our new name engraved into a logo and done with some other things, but uh, I guess well, can't, can't, can't you just take out the um, uh, Society of Rheumatic Diseases and put in Association of Integrative Medicine? Just, just, just substitute it. Don't make, don't make a big Mitzi out of it. We can do it, but we're not legally that yet. I'll do it. I'll, well, I, didn't say, I didn't say we were going to, if, no, I want to have it. You know what? I want to have it all in place so that, so that they can't you say, well, you don't have this. You don't have it. I want, I want everything ready to go. I got, I got right. the IRS papers all, all ready and, and ready to send out. I got the state papers all ready to send. I'm all ready to go. All right. Well, okay. we're doing the, we're doing the logo this week. So when the papers are official, it's ready to roll. Right. That's, that's the whole idea. All right. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Bill. Thank right. you, everybody Thank else. You. Thank you, everybody. See Have you next good, week. You guys. Uh, okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.